Welcome back to Hallway Routing and Switching Elite Training. Today topic we are going to discuss on Lawn Layer 2. Let's start our part 3. Let's look into Ether Trunk forwarding principle. Okay, so Ether Trunk is deployed between physical layer and the max sub layer. Now let's look into this uh, diagram. At the bottom here, we have the physical layer. Now just above physical layer, by right, we should have the uh, logical link, control, and the Mac. Now here, if we have configured the Ether Trunk, Ether Trunk is just uh, placed between physical layer and the Mac layer. Okay, so this is where the Ether Trunk uh, reside. Now how the Ether Trunk do the forwarding? Now for the uh, Ether Trunk to do forwarding, let's assume again I have three physical interface. So if I have interface number one, number two, and number three, I have to create what we call the hash table. So the Ether Trunk will based on the hash key to let the data to tell them that, hey, you are hash number zero, you should go for interface number one. And you are hash number one, then you have to go to link number two, and so on and so forth. All right, so uh, once, once you create what we call the uh, Ether Trunk, so Ether Trunk will have this hash value. And some of you will ask, where this hash value come from? And uh, this hash value is based on what? Well, the hash value come from the internal algorithm of the switch. And this algorithm is based on the MAC address or IP address. And this hashing is based on the number of interface or interfaces that you have. Now, after we look into the forwarding principle, now let's look into the loop balancing on the Ether trunk. Now, the concept of loop balancing is like this. You can see that the Ether trunk implement flow-based load balancing. Now, what means by flow-based load balancing? Now, assuming that if I have a computer that connect to the switch, in fact, I have a few computer connect to the switch. If I have a source of 1.1, let's say 1.1, if this particular frame is going to send, all right, so I have three frame. Now, flow base basically means that if I have a source of 1.1.1 and if this hash is based on source IP, then only the first interface will be used. It's not like the first frame will be here, the second frame will be here, and the frame will be here. Now, if let's say that is true, then when it's arrived into the switch, it will be out of sequence. So that is not true. Okay, so it actually follow what we call the flow base means that all the frame having the same source based on the hash here telling them you are supposed to go through the link number one okay so that is what we means by uh, load balancing so this is to ensure no missequencing uh, according to the mapping between hash value and the interface number so the load balancing can be implemented based on source or destination MAC address, source or destination IP, or you can use the exclusive or result of the source and destination. Now, when we go into the lab later, I'll show you how you can influence the uh, load balancing mechanism. So from here, as you can see from this uh, animation, if I have a source of 11, 11, 11, this is based on the MAC address instead of IP, all right. So you can see that it goes to the first interface and if the source is 22, 22, 22, it goes to the second interface and subsequent the 33, it goes to the third interface, all right, and so on and so forth. So it will actually, um, you know, uh, based on the hash value and based on the interface. Next, we look, look into the uh, link aggregation mode. Now in the uh, Ether trunk, we have two modes. One is called the manual load balancing, another one is called LACP. Now manual load balancing doesn't have any negotiation protocol that is running. In a, load, in a manual load balancing mode, you need to manually create an Ether trunk interface and add the number to the Ether trunk. So assuming that now if you have three interfaces and you configure the Ether trunk, then three of these will have the active. If one of them fell, then two of these will be active. So there will be no negotiation take place if you are using a manual load balancing mode. Right. Now another mode 
which you have the uh, negotiation going on is uh, LACP mode. LACP is used to implement automatic link aggregation. All right. And LACP is able to maintain the link status. So here you can see that I have three interface one, two, and three. As you can see that of the three interface, two of these is active. All right. The other one is a backup. All right. Because in the LACP, you mentioned that the maximum that I allow them to have the uh, active is two. All right. So. We are using we are using the LACP protocol for us to do this. Now, in this case, we also have another method here, M colon N. M here, we can configure how many of these are active. All right, and N here, we can configure how many of them can be a backup. So we have M colon N. Now let's look into the LACP implementation. Now we already know how the uh, LACP negotiate as well as load balance. Now LACP is a standard under 802.3 AD and uh, LACP is a dynamic link aggregation as well as de-aggregation uh, meaning that we have a maximum link as well as a least link. All right. So the maximum link by default uh, will be 8. All right, and the mean uh, the least link, or in this case, the minimum for it to up default will be one. Okay, so that will be our uh, default value. Now, here devices as both both end of the ether trunk exchange LACP PDU. All right, so which is a link aggregation control protocol data unit to negotiate actor and partner active interface and active link now what's mean over here now assuming that now you already create the interface of the ether trunk all right so with the number let's say it's one and the mode that you are going to configure is lacp so we are going to configure the lacp on both sides now once lacp is configured lacp du which is this part here will be exchanged okay so what will happen over here is that the PDU is going to send over from S1 to S2. Now what really happened here is that when S1 send the PDU as well as S2 send the PDU, it's going to send its system priority. The system priority by default is 32768 if this is uh, default. okay. Now if both of them is 32768, then they are going to look into the lower MAC address. All right, the lower MAC address. Who in this case, if it's, this is R1, then this guy will become the actor. All right, so S1 will become the actor. Now what will happen over here is if S1 is the actor, all right, then it's going to look into the priority of the interface. So the priority of the interface by default is again is 32768. The lower number means higher priority. So in this case, if let's say um, I look into the animation here, you can see that I have three interfaces here. These three interfaces, one, two, and three, having the, uh, this is the priority, the LSCP priority, and this is the interface. So this one will have the highest, all right, the priority. Now, assuming that the maximum active link that you want is two. Okay, so even though I have three of these inside the uh, ether trunk, only two of these will be inactive. Okay, only two of these will be inactive. All right, so let me show you the uh, process here. So now we have the active link. So the active link here is E0 and E1. Now, assuming that the E0, which here having the um, lower priority, which is in this case the lower number having a high priority, went down. So what will happen over here is, if let's say this link go down, then two and three will become active. All right, so this one will become active. Okay. What happened if let's say then the uh, link number one here recover? All right. So when this is recovered, will then the active link become zero and one again? 
Well, the answer is depend on the preemption. Now, by default, the preemption is disabled. Okay, so you need to enable the preemption. So, if assuming that the preemption is enabled, what will happen here is that once this E0 are back online, it will become active link again. All right, so here we have uh, the uh, LACP, how the LACP is being maintained, and how LACP maintain the active link as well as the backup link. Let's look into the GVRP principle and uh, we look into the basic concept working process of GVRP as well as registration mode. Alright, let's look into the basic concept first. Now first, let's look into the GVRP. GVRP stands for Generic VLAN Registration Protocol. Okay, now GVRP is based on GARP. A here is an attribute, so it's a generic attribute registration protocol. So GVRP is based on GARP. GVRP enable network device or devices to dynamically deliver, register and propagate VLAN attribute. Now that is very important. Now what it does here is that if let's say I have two switches over here and let's say now you create a VLAN, let's say I call it a VLAN 2. So VLAN 2 that already enabled for the uh, GVRP will send a declaration to switch number 2 and assuming that GVRP also have enabled on switch number 2. Now switch number 2 upon receive the declaration using the GVRP will create a dynamic VLAN in switch number 2. Okay, so this is a registration. Now same thing here, if let's say we are going to remove the VLAN 2, then GVRP will also deregister it through the reclaim declaration. Alright, so here we have the uh, concept called participant. Each GVRP enable port is considered participant. So I have participant here on switch number 1 and switch number 2. Now VLAN registration and deregistration attribute through attribute declaration and reclaim declaration that I mentioned earlier on here. And one more very important uh, things here you need to remember is that these features here, here, the port here must be a trunk. Okay, because the GVRP is propagated through the untagged VLAN. Alright, the untagged VLAN here is a VLAN 1, that's the default. Right. So next, we look into the uh, message type. Here we have three messages. Alright, that is the uh, GARP message type. First, we have the join message, leave message, and leave all message. In join message, we have join empty and join in. Here, join empty here declare an attribute that is not configured on the local participant. So if you are not configured on the local participant, you are going to send a join empty. Later, I'm going to show you the diagram. Whereas the join in is to declare an attribute that already registered in a local participant. So that is a join message. So if you do not have the VLAN, then you send a join empty. Now, assuming that you already have, then you are going to send a join in message in the GARP message. And for your information, GARP is a multicast message. All right, that is in layer two. Next, we have a leave message. Again, we have a leave empty and leave in. Leave empty is to deregister an attribute that is not in the local participant. Whereas the leave in is to deregister an attribute that has been registered in the local participant. So we have an empty, leave empty and leave in. And finally we have a leave all. Leave all is to deregister all attribute from the GARP participant. Okay. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel.